would still be freaking genius. It is. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to transform quadratic functions. So we're going to cover translations, reflections, and horizontal vertical shrinks and stretches, and also some combinations of all those together, right? So let's start with these right here. So it says in exercises three through 12, describe the transformation of f of x is equal to x squared represented by g. Uh, then graph each function, right? Well, we're gonna do all of that except graph in this video, all right? But I'm gonna show you all the steps on how to transform them, all right? So first of all, uh, just to remind you, the parent function of a quadratic equation or function is this one right here, right? f of x is equal to x squared. So when you graph this, it's just a parabola, right? Now, the to give a little bit more context, the vertex form of a quadratic function is this one right here. f of x is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k, right? So there's a few really important things to point out here. So a right here tells you how much your parabola stretches or shrinks. The h right here moves the parabola side to side, and we also have to take the opposite sign over here. So I'll go over that a little bit in just a second. And then this k right here just moves your parabola up or down, okay? So let's start with this one right here. g of x is equal to x squared minus 3. So here we just have x squared plus or minus some number at the very end, right? So this minus 3 is the exact same thing as this plus or minus k over here. Okay, so whenever you have a plus or minus some number at the very end, again, that just moves it up or down. Here we have a negative 3, so it moves it down, right? So the transformation here would just be that it got translated or shifted down three spaces or three spots, okay? Uh, number 4, g of x is equal to x squared plus 1. So again, we have this plus or minus some number at the very end. So here this would translate the parabola. Uh, I was gonna write out translate, I don't need to do that. It would translate it up one spot or one space. Okay, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Number five, g of x is equal to x plus two in parentheses squared. So again, uh, these parentheses are the same as these parentheses, okay? So this number right here in the parentheses just tells you how many spaces you move the parabola side to side. Here we have a positive two, but again, you wanna take the opposite sign. So we want to move the parabola negative two spaces. Now, what does negative two mean? Well, just think about the number line or just like on a graph. The numbers to the right are positive, the numbers to the left are negative. So if we're moving negative two spaces, that just means we're moving two spaces to the left. Okay, number six, g of x is equal to x minus four in parentheses squared. Okay, so again, this number tells us how many uh, spaces we move it side to side, but we want to take the opposite number. So we have a negative four here, so we're going to move it positive four spaces, which means we're just moving it four spaces to the right, right, in the positive direction. Uh, let's see, seven and eight are very similar to five and six, so we'll skip those, but we'll jump down to nine and ten, right? So nine over here, you can see we have two different transformations going on, right? We're moving it side to side and we're moving it up and down. So side to side, we're moving it, again, taking the opposite number, negative six, right? So we're moving it six, uh, let's write it over here. So six spaces to the left, and then here, negative two, it just means we're moving it two spaces down, okay? Uh, number 10 over here, g of x is equal to x minus nine squared plus five. Again, here's, uh, we're moving it side to side and up or down, right? So here we're gonna move it positive nine spaces. So that means nine spaces to the right. And here, uh, five spaces up, right? So five spaces up. Okay, 11 and 12, same thing, very similar to nine and 10. So we'll skip those right now. All right, now let's do these uh, next few examples. And the instructions are the exact same thing. And again, I'm not gonna graph them, I'm totally sorry. Now, before we do these, uh, these mostly have to do with horizontal, vertical, stretching and shrinking, all right? So there's a couple rules that we need to go over first. It might not make complete sense at first, but once we get into these examples, it's gonna start becoming more clear, I hope anyways. All right, so the first thing I wanna point out is how to identify if an equate or a, a function is vertical or horizontal, all right? So if it's vertical, you'll see something like this. You'll see that f of x or g of x or y or whatever is equal to ax squared, where a here is just a number, okay? It can be a big number, a little number, a fraction, uh, a positive number, a negative number, whatever. It's just a number, okay? Uh, times x squared. And the main thing is, notice there's no parentheses here around the a and the x, or the number and the x, right? 
Now, on the other hand, with a horizontal function, you're going to see something like y is equal to, and then you'll see that the number and the x are both inside of a set of parentheses. Okay, so the hors have parentheses. Okay, now if you see that either of these have a negative sign out front, that means the whole function or the whole parabola is being reflected over the x axis. Okay, and if you see a negative sign inside of the parentheses like that, that means it's being reflected over the y axis. Okay, so let's start there and then we'll get into the stretching and shrinking a little bit after. So uh, let's start with 17. g of x is equal to negative x squared. As you can see, we have a negative sign out here in front, right? No parentheses to be found. So this means that our parabola is simply being reflected, uh, reflected over the x axis, okay? Uh, 18, we have g of x is equal to negative x in parentheses squared, right? So we have this negative sign inside the parentheses. So this one is being reflected uh, ref yeah, let's write it out here, reflected across the y axis, all right? Uh, 19, we have g of x is equal to 3x squared. So no parentheses around the number and the x, right? So that means we're dealing with something vertically, right? We have vertical stretching or shrinking here, okay? How can you tell if it's vertical stretching or vertical shrinking? Well, all you have to do is look at the first number right here. Uh, which is represented by a, right? This is our a number three. Now, uh, for vertical stretching or shrinking, so it's a stretch if your number over here is bigger than one, and it's a shrink if it's smaller than one, okay? That kind of makes sense, right? Just kind of logically, like if something is bigger than one, it's stretching. If it's smaller than one, it's shrinking, okay? So three over here is bigger than one, so that means it's a stretch, right? and it's a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Okay, 20 over here, uh, g of x is equal to one third x squared. We don't have parentheses here, right? So that means it's a vertical and it's smaller than one. So that means it's a shrink, right? So we have a vertical shrink uh, by a factor of one third, right? Because that's the number we have right here for a. Okay, and one kind of distinction I wanna make right now is uh, our factors over here, when it's a vertical stretch or shrink, just whatever your a number is, that's what the factor is, right? So that's why here we said by a factor of three, and then here that's why we said by a factor of one third. But when you're dealing with horizontal stretching or shrinking, it's a little bit different. You actually have to take the reciprocal of whatever number you have here, okay? So with that in mind, let's jump to 21. G of x is equal to, in parentheses, 2x squared. Okay, so we have our parentheses here, so that means we're dealing with something horizontal. Is this a stretch or a shrink? Well, let's look at our a number right here. So it's a two, right? So in this case, it's just the opposite of the vertical. So here, if your number a is smaller than one, it's a stretch. If it's bigger than one, it's a shrink. So here two, it's bigger than one. So that means it's gonna be a shrink. So horizontal shrink, that's what's going on here. Okay, how much is it shrinking by? By a factor of what? Well, it would be by a factor of, again, I told you take the reciprocal, so the reciprocal of two is one half, right? So by a factor of one half. Okay, so again, just keep in mind that all the horizontal stuff is the complete opposite of the vertical stuff. The vertical stuff actually kind of makes sense, right? Because with the vertical stuff, when we're talking about A, Okay, if your number is bigger than one, it's stretching, it's getting bigger. Okay, that makes sense. If your number is smaller than one, it's getting smaller, it's shrinking. Okay, that makes sense. So if I can at least remember the vertical stuff, I can kind of figure out what the horizontal stuff is, right? Because I just know it's the opposite. Okay, and even the A numbers are different, right? So for vertical, the A number, it's just when you're taking the fact or finding the factor, right? It's just the normal factor, right? So A is just completely normal. But for the horizontal one, it's the opposite of the vertical, right? It's, it's not normal. In fact, it's the reciprocal. It's the upside down one. Reciprocal, is that how we spell it? That's how I spell it. Okay, so now let's uh, just do a few more here. So 22, uh, g of x is equal to negative, in parentheses, 2x squared. Okay, so we have these parentheses again. That means it's horizontal. I know that much. And also this number is bigger than one, right? So for a horizontal, that means it's a shrink. 
by a factor of, again, this is our A number, just take the reciprocal of that, so that would be one half, right, by a factor of one half. The other thing that's going on here is, as you can see, we have a negative sign out here in front. So there's a reflection going on, right? Reflection specifically over the X axis, right? Because it's not inside of the parentheses, right? So there's a horizontal shrink by a factor of one half and we're reflecting um, over the X axis. Boom, all right? Uh, let's see, a couple more here, 23. So G of X is equal to one fifth X squared minus four. Okay, so there's no parentheses here. So that means this is vertical. So vertical, uh, stretch or shrink? Well, it'd be a shrink, right? Because vertical makes sense. Vertical, I like vertical. Vertical, shrink, right? Because it's a small number, it's shrinking. Um, and then the other thing is we have a vertical shrink by how much? By a factor of, remember, this one's the normal one. Makes sense, right? So a vert uh, by a factor of one-fifth, okay? And then the other thing that's happening here is we have plus or minus some number at the very end. So this just moves it up or down, right? So then we're also translating it or just shifting it down four spaces. Okay, now this last one right here is trying to be tricky because as you can see, we have parentheses, but these parentheses just move our parabola left or right, right? That's what this number right here is, right? We don't have a number attached to the X like we did here or here. So these parentheses right here just mean we're moving this left or right, right? So here we have a minus one. So again, we take the opposite. So this would be a positive one. So this would be one space to the right. But we also have to take care of this A number out here. Now, again, this is just by itself, right? There's no X attached to it. There's no parentheses around this number. So that means we're talking about vertical something, right? So vertical, uh, is this a stretch or a shrink? It's a shrink, right? Because it's a small number, less than one. So a vertical shrink by a factor by factor of one half, right? So vertical's normal, right? We like vertical. Horizontal, on the other hand, that one can go kiss my ass. Okay, so for these next few problems, again, we're just describing the transformation, all right? So 27 is f of x is equal to three times x plus two squared plus one, okay? So again, this one moves side to side, this one moves up and down, and this one tells us uh, vertical or horizontal stretching or shrinking, right? So uh, first of all, let's deal with this one since it's always the biggest pain in the butt. Uh, there's no parentheses around this number, right? There's no X attached to it. It's just open and wild and free. So that means it's vertical. So we have uh, vertical what? Stretching or shrinking. Again, this number's bigger than one. Vertical makes sense. So this is a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch by a factor of three, okay? Then here we have a plus two, so we'll take the opposite sign of that, so we'll do minus two. So minus two just means we're moving two spaces to the left, and then plus one at the end means we're moving up one spot. Okay, uh, next one, f of x is equal to negative four, x plus one in parentheses squared minus five. Again, this minus four is open and free, right? It's got its uh, ghibli bits hanging out. So four is a vertical stretch, right? Because it's bigger than one. Uh, by a factor of four, of four. We'll deal with the negative symbol in a second. Uh, we'll do, save that for last. Uh, then we have this plus one and minus five, right? So here we have a minus one, so that just means we're moving one spot to the left and five spaces down, okay? Now, since we do have a minus sign out here in front, that means a reflection, right? So is it the x-axis or y-axis? Well, since it's out here, in the very front, not inside any sets of parentheses, that means it's the x-axis, right? So we're also uh, reflecting this entire parabola over the x-axis. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.